mouth needs to be lower than the obstruction. So you want them downhill, the patient downhill. And most protocols say attempt four back slaps. So the head should be lower than the lungs so that you're using gravity to aid the removal of the obstruction in the trachea. You slap the patient between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand fairly hard. If it's toddlers, you can lie them over your knee and uh, slap them. Again, getting the downhill position. If it's young babies, you can really get gravity on your side and hold them upside down. But if you are going to dislodge a foreign body using this method, it's got to be a fairly hard slap. Now, I said a fairly hard slap because what you're hoping is, is that the, when you slap them on the back of the chest, the vibrations or the shock wave that you put, put through the chest when you slap them is going to loosen the obstruction. That's what you're hoping to do. So let's just uh, illustrate that now. All I could find was a, a, a neonatal doll here, but never mind, it shows the principle. So if it's a baby, we can actually hold them up by the ankles very securely like that, and we can hit them on the back between the shoulder blades. And of course, how hard you hit them is going to be very proportional to the size of the child, because if you obviously hit this child hard, you could, you could kill the child by hitting them too hard. But if the child's a bit bigger, if they're a toddler, then we're best to hold them over our knee. Now, actually, if this was a bigger child, we'd hold them over a knee. I know this is still a small doll, but imagine it was a bigger child. We can then hit them on the back between the shoulder blades there like that. And the, the, the mouth where we're hoping the obstruction is going to come out from is quite a lot lower than where the obstruction is. So older children, say uh, 18 months, two, three, four years old, you can hold them over your knee. Get gravity on your side for the back slap to try and remove the obstruction or the foreign body in the airway. Now, if it's an adult, it's a bit different because you can't pick them up by the ankles or lean them over your knee. But again, imagine Sally's got an obstruction round about uh, uh, here. We want it to come out of her mouth here, so we need to get the obstruction, the, the mouth lower than the obstruction. So can you just lean forward, Sally? Put your head right between your knees. That's it, right down like that. That's great. Now, we've got the obstruction here. I can slap her on the back here, and hopefully the obstruction will come out here. So slap her, I would slap her quite hard between the shoulder blades using the heel of the hand like that. The shock wave would go through a chest to a trachea and hopefully it would dislodge the foreign body. And you would attempt that four times before we move on to the next part of the... Uh, the so let's think about this choking protocol. One, if they're coughing, do nothing. Two, if they're not coughing, try back slaps. That's uncontroversial. Now the next thing is a little controversial. Some people say you should try the abdominal thrust manoeuvre next. Others say you should try clearing the obstruction next. And in my view, it's probably worth thinking about clearing the obstruction next, although I don't want to argue about this because I know there's a lot of arguments both ways. So what I've, so what I've got next is, is digital clearing, using your fingers to clear the obstruction. So let's think about this. I've put down as, as point three. Clear obstruction with fingers. And the reason I'm hesitating to put this third, of course, is that you may push the object further in. That is the risk. So what you need to do is put your fingers back along the side of the mouth. So feel the side of the mouth and follow the side of the mouth round like that. And the hope is that you come to the object from the side or behind and can flick it out. If you go straight back in, then the risk is that you'll push the object further in. So work your finger back along the sides of the mouth, along the sides of the mouth, very important, not through the centre, through the sides of the mouth, to avoid pushing the object further in. If you can feel an object, 
flick it out quickly in case it's re-inhaled. Because once the object is removed, the first thing the patient will do is gasp because they're so desperate to get air into the lungs. And if you haven't flicked it out the way quickly, they could re-inhale it. Of course, this depends entirely on the object being uh, fairly accessible near the back of the mouth in the oropharynx or somewhere like that. Of course, if you could have a book in and, and maybe take the obstruction out with a pair of uh, um, forceps or something, that would be ideal. But it's very difficult when the patient is so, uh, so panicky, as anyone is when they can't breathe. But certainly I've done this uh, myself with fish bones. Um, patient's been choking with a fish bone. Just open the patient's mouth, look back into the oropharynx or at the arches at the back of the mouth and you can just put in your tweezers or your, your whatever they are, forceps, and just lift it out. And instant relief, the patient is absolutely delighted to get rid of this obstruction. Not always possible. So I'm not putting this down as a rule. You've got to use your initiative. But that is one thing you can do, clearing it out with your fingers. Now the next thing is the abdominal thrust manoeuvre. If that's still not working, so first of all, if the coffin were left them alone. Secondly, back slaps. If that doesn't work, try clearing it with your fingers. If that doesn't work, the next thing is the abdominal thrust manoeuvre. The fourth thing you would try in this protocol. So let's think about this, abdominal thrust manoeuvre. Here's the theory. You clench your fist between the patient's navel and the bottom of their sternum and place the other hand over it. And the fist you place on its side, as we'll see in a minute. For children, use the fist side of the fist on its own, not with the other hand over the top, because clearly you need proportionately less force in a smaller person, such as a child. You use just two fingers if it's babies. And this manoeuvre is best performed from behind the patient, but may be carried out with the patient on their back if necessary. So let's think about the abdominal thrust manoeuvre now, and, and Sally has agreed to volunteer for this again. What we're going to do is put our fist at the upper part of the abdomen. The best thing to do to get the leverage here, you get behind her, and you can feel the bottom of her sternum there, and uh, her tummy button's about there. So you put the fist on its side like this, and you put the other hand over it, and you get behind her. Now what you do is you pull your hand up and back very quickly. I'm not going to do this because it's quite a nasty thing to do if someone's not choking. So get behind them and pull that up and in very quickly like that. And when you do that, the, uh, it, it'll press on the diaphragm and push the diaphragm up. And that will increase the pressure in the chest. And the idea is that this will actually dislodge the foreign body and go <coughs> like that. And, and uh, the foreign body will, will come out. The abdominal thrust manoeuvre. The problem is it's a horrible thing to do to someone, but of course, if they're choking, then, then, then it's necessary. So if you do have to do it, bear in mind the fact that you might have damaged the tissues in the area, and the person should receive a medical check afterwards just to make sure that, 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 that there's nothing damaged. So get behind the patient, top of the abdomen, and pull hard, and hopefully the patient will go like that, and the foreign object, hopefully, will, will be removed. So the abdominal thrust manoeuvre. You need to lie the patient down, then you just do it from the front. It's just the same, but it seems to work better. You can go like, to get behind them, go behind them, and that sort of sharp movement like that. And hopefully that will dislodge the foreign body. Fairly drastic treatment, but if the alternative is uh, asphyxiating due to a foreign body in the upper airway, it's well worth having a go. Point one, if the patient's coughing, do nothing. Point two, try back slaps if they stop coughing and the airway is blocked. If that doesn't work, try clearing it with your fingers. If that doesn't work, try the abdominal thrust manoeuvre. If the patient stops breathing, then artificial respiration may be necessary. 
artificial respiration.